Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today to explore this topic uh, about how the mind and body work together. I love sharing all the learnings that I have been going through and and sharing it with you from my perspective um, is making me feel like I'm on the right route in my life and it just fulfills me so much. Um, so I really want to talk about the mind and body uh, and how they work together because ever since I started doing breath work uh, with my clients and with new clients that is joining me every week um, I just got to start going deeper into this this area uh, because we often um, talk about physical health and mental health separately but the truth is they are really deeply connected like our thoughts, our emotions, and even our past experiences shape not just how we feel mentally, but how our bodies react as well. So over the next, I don't know how long it's going to take me to, to, to share what I want to share with you, but over the next 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, I really want to dive into fascinating insight on how we can understand this connection and use it to create meaningful changes in our lives so we can transform it the way we want it. Because the only transformation happens when we decide, when we make that decision that we are ready for the change. Because 90% of your thoughts today are the same as the day before. I thought that was mind blowing. It's incredible. So it means that most of the thoughts we have every day are just repetition of the past. We just keep repeating it. So like our minds are these machinery that just keeps bringing back to the habits and recycling the same ideas and the worries and the beliefs and everything over and over and over again. And, and it's, it's crucial because, well, because if you are constantly thinking, thinking the same thoughts, you are, we are likely creating the same outcomes. And if you want a different future, which has been for me over the last three years since I got into the coaching industry, um, I had to start to think differently. And then the change in my life and the way I feel, the way I see the world, the world hasn't changed. What changed was how I see the world and this is where the power of your thoughts really comes in. Our thoughts are incredibly powerful. They shape our beliefs, our decisions, our life. Like literally you live a life the way you do is because you think that way. It's so powerful. So imagine that every thought you have is like a, a Lego block that you're constructing your future. So if you continuously think thoughts of doubt and limitation and fear and, and disappointment and betrayal, you're gonna create a future where those exact experiences will exist in your life. You're gonna be doubtful, you're gonna not have what you want, you're gonna be betrayed, you're gonna be disappointed because you're focusing on that. But if you choose to think thoughts of possibility, thoughts of greatness, what you do is you basically open the door to a future filled with potential. So it's all in your hands, well, in your mind. So, what happens is so many of us live in the in the thing like in the past, the things that we have experienced in the past, because our past plays a massive role in our life. You know, those experiences that we have had when we were growing up. Yes, they're good. They're good and bad. Because these these experiences end up creating these emotional memories that shape 
how we see the world. So your perception is always based on the way you were brought up. Those deep-seated beliefs that you have about life. And they get stored in your body. And without knowing, they actually guide us. They guide our thoughts and they guide how we act, how we behave. So if you are constantly playing the old memory that's giving you pain, that's giving you hurt, so what you are doing is you just keep replaying and replaying and you're reliving the same emotional state today which ends up limiting your ability to create a new future. So you keep staying and living the past. So to be able to break from this cycle, you need to be greater than your body, your mind. So it means that your mind, which is completely filled with the memories from your past and all those habits that you have had all these life, but clearly isn't serving you because you are looking for a change. You are looking for transformation, yet you still allow your past to define your future. It is literally dictating how you live every day without really worrying about what's coming next. You just keep reliving these past memories and reliving those old emotions that's giving you pain. So what you really need to do is really just focus on the person that you want to become. That's where the real change starts to happen. Because your personality is essentially a collection of all those past experiences, all those emotions and all those reactions that you've had over the years. That every experience you've had had shaped you who you are, how you think, how you feel, how you act, how you see and, and, and understand people in your life and you you describe them from your perspective. I know it's really powerful, but it's also limiting. So if you constantly stay with your past and how it defines the way who you are, which is not serving you, then you really need to start to believe that your personality is fixed, that fixed mindset. And to be able to reshape your reality, you really need to start changing your thoughts and your actions and your behaviors, which will help you change your personality. And a lot of the people in my life, especially my close family members, uh, um, and this I get to hear this from my um brother's wife who is very close to me that would always tell me that I've changed in a very good way you know I should always say like complete the sentence with like in a really good way um your personality has changed you're not as reactive and and the same events will occur around us or same stories will come up and same conversations will come up but the way I approach it now is noticeably different which has affected how I see the world around me and how I became more responsive. And I do not allow what had happened to me in the past to dictate my moment and relive the emotions that had hurt me back then and ruin my moment with my family, with my friends. Because our minds can become so, like, what's the word I'm looking, so stubborn in a story we've created about, it could be like, it could, it might not even be exactly how you remember. 
or it could be a way you're remembering is how it didn't go the way you wanted. It may have never actually happened in that past, in that, in that um, level of depth. Maybe you've made them uglier than they are. But what you're doing is you're trying to make yourself right by reliving these paths that may have never even happened. You might have just filling the blanks in your mind with the stories that making you feel how you felt back then. So you keep reinforcing these negative patterns and you're limiting your growth. But what I'm trying to say and do and help and so passionate about is helping you to choose to stop these patterns. Because when we re repeat the same thoughts and actions over time, what happens is our body goes to autopilot. Like this morning, I get up. I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I have a shower, I get out, I get dressed, I put my um, do my daily skincare and I come downstairs, I put the coffee on. And whilst the coffee is brewing, I always get my uh, morning uh, ginger and lemon and apple shot. I get that ready uh, and I have that. So see how how doing things repeatedly makes us um, get into that autopilot. I don't even know I'm doing it. I'm not even conscious of it. It became like part of me, like my body is doing it automatically. So if you think of all the things that you're doing every day to keep these stories from your past, to keep them alive, to keep, keep them fresh, that's where you're struggling. This is why you are you are struggling to create those lasting change in your life. So to be able to break free, you might consciously disrupt this cycle. Literally entrap these autopilot thoughts and movements and behaviors with the new ones. Because these thoughts and emotions and behaviors are what are holding us back. So if you really want to have a change, and if you really want to have a different environment, you have to know that you need to change your life by starting changing your surroundings, the people you interact with the habits you have, those habits that you start your day, like if you're getting up and picking up your phone and checking the Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and, and your emails before you even get up to have a nice deep breath and be grat like grateful for the moment you are, the breath you have, the bed you sleep, the gratitude because all these things influence your mind and your body. But true growth happens when you think beyond your current conditions. And this means you have to make intentional effort. You, There are a number of books I can recommend, like... Um, tiny habits I think it's by James Clear where is he's teaching how you can stack habits to create new habits because when you start creating new habits habits to replace the ones that is not serving you the payoff is huge it really gives you the power to create a life that's aligned with your true desires. One of the most powerful tools you have, I'm not saying it is, uh, it's not something that I created. It's something that 
thousands and millions of people who are successful out there doing. Do you know what it is? It's you have to have intention. Setting a clear, focused intention that will align with both with your mind and with your body towards a goal that's going to make you feel better and happier and more joyful version of yourself. Because without clarity, your mind will just be scattered. And your body is like, doesn't know what to do with it. But when you have clear intention, you give yourself direction. Like your mind and your body end up working together to create this reality. Future doesn't just happen. You know, we actively have to shape our thoughts and our emotions and our actions to shape it. Because it means that you have the power to create the future you want. And it starts now with the choices you make today. Because the, the, the number of people I have been working over the last three years and, and, and the work I have been doing on myself, um, which is a never ending, I'll be forever student of healing my, my stories and my past, and my, my experiences from the past, both mentally and physically. begins when we start to feel whole as we are. It's not an end, it's like a journey, but this is where the true healing begins, when you feel whole, when you feel complete, when you feel content. So many of us walk through life feeling as if something is missing, But healing happens when we reconnect with our true selves and feel a sense of wholeness. It's about integrating the mind and body and not seeing them as separate entities. And one of the best ways to cultivate this wholeness through breath work because breath work will help you become familiar with your own mind. It will give you space to just switch off your monkey mind and absorb your thoughts and just see those patterns and be able to make conscious choices when you are in that theta brainwave state, when we are right in the top of the session. You can, of course, do this by meditating, but we live in such a world that our mind finds it so hard to switch it off. So with your breath, with the help of your innate power, you can actually switch that monkey mind off and just focus. And I always call the breath work as like a meditation on turbocharge to help you become more aware of how your thoughts and your emotions are affecting your body. Because when you, when you learn to let go of the past, something incredible happens. The past, almost like it no longer exists in your mind or body. You just stop living in the old patterns. You almost like liberate yourself from, from these old patterns and old stories and you create something completely new. It's just incredible. It, the only word I can describe it is, it's liberating. It's absolutely liberating. Did you know that what you think and feel can actually affect our DNA, can actually influence our genetic expression. This means that by changing your mindset, 
you are not just influencing your future, you are potentially influencing your biological makeup as well. Like you're changing the generations. And the key to creating a new future is to live fully in the present moment. When you're present, when you are no longer weighed down by these past stories and feeling anxious about your future, this is the space where real life happens, where you can consciously shape your thoughts and actions to align with your vision for the future. Because many of us spend our entire life living in stress without even knowing that we are actually addicted to it. We've become so used to feeling anxious or overwhelmed or stress. It just became our default state when like your body almost starts craving daily these stress like it kind of looks for it i don't know how many of you find yourself like when everything is going great like like suddenly you you just try to find something to moan about something to stress about and you just feel like oh, can't be can't be can't be right because Everything is just so fine. Everything is just so calm. So I better create some chaos and break this cycle. Do you see how powerful it is? Your thoughts literally can make you sick, but can also heal you. These negative patterns that we have made it our second nature is giving us all kinds of illnesses, all kinds of problems. But being positive is so healing. It's great for your wellness. And it makes you feel better. How many of you feel sick at the end of a really long run events and uh, where you feel so stressed to the like top level? I used to get sick every time when I organize an event. At the end of, literally at the end of the day, I'd go to bed feeling exhausted. My body would completely run out of the energy and I would just, I'd just be sick. It was because I was running constantly on that overwhelm, 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 and stress, stress, stress. It was almost like, if I don't feel like this, it means I'm not working hard enough. If I'm not working hard enough, then I don't deserve the money I'm earning. And this, this cycle of thinking just made me sick. The moment I noticed, it was the opening. Literally, I just felt this light bulb moment, because my thoughts were making me sick. My negative thinking was, was basically giving me this chronic overwhelm. But the moment I changed it to positive thinking, changed it into, well, I can have it easy. It comes easy to me. This is my skill. This is my talent. I started to notice my strengths and appreciated my strengths. And I started to um, celebrate myself and cheered myself. Then I just noticed I didn't have any of that anymore. Our mind has a tremendous ability to influence the body and our health. The ultimate goal is to really become pure consciousness, a state where you are no longer limited by the mind or the body, but instead you exist in a state of wholeness and love. When you reach this point, 
you realize that the mind and body are just tools for experiencing life, but they are not who you are at your core. I hope it makes sense. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a better understanding of how the mind and body is working together and how you can use this connection to transform your life. But just one thing before I go, I want you to remember that you have the power to change your thoughts. You have the power to change your life by just changing what you're focusing on, what you're thinking on. Because in doing so, you are going to change your destiny. Thank you.